without turning it over, Providence will do well. No question about it. He's very important out there for the Friars today. Providence is a team very strong inside, and a guy that's been coming up very big lately has been their forward, Derek Brown. You can talk about any one of the Providence front court players, but Brown has been the man as you take a look at his numbers over the last 10 games, up five in points, just doing a great job, shoots the three, can put it on the floor, just an all-around guy. Well, it's been working well for him lately. Should be a good matchup today. Providence College against the Pitt Panthers. Stay with us for the starting lineups. We'll be back right after this. For the Pitt Panthers, starting at guard will be the coach's son, the sophomore, Kevin Willard. Vontigo Cummings, the freshman guard, highly touted player. Garrick Thomas in the three-guard lineup. 6'5", he's the best three-point shooter in the Big East. Mark Blount, the seven-footer. Again, a freshman young team here in the middle. And, of course, Chad Varga, who's been playing great basketball, number 50 for the Pitt Panthers will be playing it forward. And for Providence, God Sham God will be starting in the backcourt along with the senior. A lot of poise there in Michael Brown in the middle, Ruben Garces, Derek Brown, and Austin Crozier up front for the Friars. Good look at Ralph Willard, an outstanding coaching career at Western Kentucky in his second season for the Pitt Panthers. And Pete Gillen also in his second season, originally at Xavier for the Providence College Friars. Providence has been solid at home versus the last three matches they have taken here at the Civic Center. They'd like to keep that going today. Now it'll be God Sham God at point running the show, and this will be a tightly contested game by both teams defensively, Doris. Oh, Pitt will open up man-to-man. -man. Ralph Willard, known for his def defensive strategies, opens with the man-to-man. The -man. We'll probably see a lot of 1-3-1 one, one from Pitt today. Oh, nice rebound inside off the miss. That's Mark Blount. That'll be a real key in this ball game. Who can control the backboards? Providence also opening in a man-to-man. -man. Garces is getting the Varga match. And that will be an excellent matchup early in this game. Ruben Garces, of course, very strong up front. 6'9", 235 against Chad Varga. Gives up a couple inches at 6'6", 215, but Varga has been the hot hand. I think we'll Garces put a body on him and just try to disrupt him physically. Nice shot inside by Garrick Thomas. Kind of an easy lay-in there for Pitt on the inbounds play. Derrick Brown from Michael Brown. Providence spread right now in their offensive set against this Pitt man-to-man. -man. And there's Shamgott. I think he's really key in this game to run the show for the Friars. Well, critical that he, he run his club without turning the basketball over. Great move by Crozier there, just gets the baseline, takes a step and goes hard. Looked like Mark Blount, the freshman center for Pitt with the reject and the foul. He's from New York, Dobbs Ferry High School. He played at Oak Hill Academy. You can see just Varga trailing the play. He was matched up against Crozier. Crozier got the step at the baseline. Correction, Garrick Thomas picking up that personal foul on the good penetrating move by Crozier. Talking to the Providence staff today, they said they want to attack Pitt inside. They have been relying primarily on their jump shooting ability, and that, that's held them over the last four or five games, but they do want to go inside and try and establish something early. Got a strong front line. Crozier standing in. He's averaging better than 15 a game, and he's an 82% free throw, and he's got them both getting the Friars on the board in this game, and it's like a little pressure here by Providence. Trap right over half court. Now Providence will scramble to match up. Garrick Thomas, he's the best three-point shooter at better than 50% in the Big East. Just nails that one. Well, you got to find that's a problem when you go to trap. You're going to give something up, and you don't want to give it up to him because he can shoot the ball. Garrick, Derek Brown can't get it to go on the penetration. And that's Montego Cummings with the basketball for Pitt, number three. Providence with some tight pressure, and I think that's why Ralph Willard with the three-guard lineup. Good-looking alley-oop to Blount, but he can't convert. Got the look, just tried to soft turnaround, won't fall, but 
You're right. I think uh, Ralph just looking to try and get some action in his front court, or in his back court, rather. Handle Providence is great man-to-man -man defense with Mike Brown and Shamgod. They do a nice job pressuring the backcourt of the other club. Shamgod can't get it to go, and Pitt right back at it, but Flout can't handle it inside from Thomas, and it's a turnover by Pitt. Derek Brown with the look. Crozier from the top. Got it! A solid ball movement by Providence. They just went and attacked early. Didn't get the first look in transition, but can often score when you get the second look. Providence had a recent game at Boston College where they made 14 out of 21 threes. They've made 40 threes in their last three games. Varga can't get it to go. The crowd wanted a walk here at the Providence Civic Center. Oh, pretty look inside. That's Shamgod to Derek Brown for two. Great job by Derek to get behind the defense. Pitt never saw him. He got behind and gets an easy look. Boy, both teams, pace-wise, really looking to push the basketball early in this game. That's Garrick Thomas up top. Kevin Willard. Montego coming, so we're seeing some pretty good ball movement early by Pitt. Now the turnover by the Panthers on that forced entry pass. I think they're going to have Kevin Willard with the blocking foul as he tried to recover defensively, and Ralph Willard, his dad, with a couple of comments early on this particular transition defense by the Panthers. Well, they've tried to make this wing to block pass three times down the floor, and three times it's not been good, and Providence, you see, just pushes off the turnover, and Crozier forces the action and draws the foul. A couple of turnovers already in this game, and we've got a substitution early for Pitt. It's Andre Howard. Looks like he's in for Mark Blount. A smaller lineup here for Pitt, and we'll see if they look to push it more. It's like a little zone this time, Doris. Looks like a 2-3, and he often tries to match up out of that. You talk about him in the open, Derek Brown getting busy early. Well, wow, Providence is doing an excellent job early in this game of making quick passes inside. Pete Gillen's got to be happy early with the ball movement as Vontigo Cummings picks up his first personal foul. With Derek Brown, we talked about him in the beginning. He's off to a good start. They're just playing so solidly over the last 10 games. It's been a lot more aggressive attacking the basket. I think it takes a little time to adjust to Big East play, and over the last few games, he has started to do just that. No question is Brown makes the free throw. He's got five, and Providence off to a good start. Oh, Kevin Willard with a nice runner in the lane. Well, that's a tough look, but that's the kind of thing their guards need to do. Before they can make that pass to the block, the guards have got to prove that they can score. A pit noted for their defense, but so far, Providence has been very quick to the basket. Sham got way too strong on that one. But again, Providence on the backboards with Crozier getting the job done and drawing the foul. I think coming into this, both staffs knew the rebounding would be critical. That's really an opportunity look for Crozier. Looked like Varga had the board, but then knocked out of his hands and Crozier right there. Well, a real key area in this game, of course, is Providence inside. They love to bang the backboards. Vontigo Cummings with his second personal foul. Crozier, again, an excellent free throw shooter, and he's perfect so far today. He's just a solid shooter, as you see. Cummings picking up his second personal foul. Cummings had missed nine games. He had injured his left hand early in the season. Highly touted recruit. He's played the last two. A very athletic performer. See, hey. jinxed him now. <laughs> Can't talk about free throw shooters while they're on the line. Can't get that second one to go, but Providence again all over the backboards, and that drive a coach crazy when his team defensively doesn't box out and get rebounds on free throws. Tell you what, giving up offensive rebounds is like a knife in the heart to coaches. You know, you work so hard. Providence relentless. They'll just try and get a hand on it and make something happen. And Michael Brown looking to go to his left with that one. Very poised senior out there for Providence as they work the perimeter against this pit zone. Looks like Pitt matching up out of this. And Michael Brown with the tray. And I'll tell you, they're loving that three-point shot lately. I'll tell you what, the shooters for Providence doing a nice job finding the open spots, the seams against the zone. Mike Brown doing just that. There's Vontigo Cummings with the penetration. He's right in there. Oh, dangerous pass up to Thomas. Providence very aggressive early in this game with the defense. Tough look. 
Chad Varga gets the look, and I'll tell you, that was not an easy basket in the paint. And he's just got such great quickness, and he does a nice job feeling the defense and spinning off whichever way they give him. So there's the pickoff. Providence with the turnover, and Vontigo Cummings with the look. Now the turnover. Back over to Shamgod. He tries to push for Providence. Thomas did such a great job. Pitt had the double team. He steps in the passing lane, but then it kills you to go down the other end and make a mistake. Derek Brown can't get the three to go. Long rebound. That's reeled in by Cummings with the quickness. Out to Kevin Willard. Pretty sure they're going to catch Shamgod with the body there as Kevin Willard, transfer from Bowling Green. Number 13 off to a solid start. Well, early going here. It's Providence 14, Pitt 9 at the Providence Civic Center. We'll be back in just a moment. Back to the Providence Civic Center. It's Providence up by five early in this ball game, but Pitt's got some answers inside. Well, we talked about Varg at the top of this one, and not an easy look, but he spins off the defense and gets that one to fall. They need to establish something inside. No question about it. And he's been the guy lately. He's coming off a 26-point effort against Syracuse, and he's a guy who's really had a hot hand. Michael Gill, number 21, has checked into the game for Pitt. He'll be playing inside along with Andre Howard and Chad Varga for the Panthers. Providence into a little trapping zone here. Pitt has struggled to shoot the basketball. We'll see if they can get that long-range stuff going. Willard can't get that one down. There's Varga. Oh, nice follow-up by Chad Varga inside. We showed him in the replay, and he's right back at it. Well, he will do the job on the board. Somebody from Providence has to put a body on him. Providence right back. That's Crozier in the corner. Good matchup here with Gill, the freshman. This is a young Pitt team. Gill, just a freshman. Vontigo Cummings. This is a highly touted recruiting class for Ralph Willard. He's trying to blend some of the youngsters into the lineup. Just a matter of these guys gaining experience. What is it, six or seven new guys on the roster? It's tough to adjust to. Especially in Big East play. That's Derek Brown from the corner as he continues with his hot hand. He's got seven already in this one with the baseline jumper. Well, he's been he's done a nice job operating on the baseline. He's either checked out to 15 feet or got himself on the block. He scored inside and out thus far. Pitt with the basketball. That's Andre Howard. He's got Vontigo Cummings and Willard as they try to move the basketball against this Providence defense. Providence dropped back into their man-to-man. -man. There's the miss. Chad Varga can't get that line drive free to go. It's Michael Brown right back. Nice box out inside. It's like Andre Howard, the freshman from Philadelphia, Overbrook High School, same high school that Will Chamberlain went to with the rebound. Providence stays with their man-to-man -man on the defensive end. Kevin Willard's been pretty solid with the ball early in this game for Pitt. Jerry McCullough, if you're just joining us, did not get the start. And that's Willard draining the baseline jump shot. Great job by Willard to release the basketball. Then they run him off the solid screen on the block, and he squares nicely. Look good. Panthers have closed this thing to three points here in the early going. It's Providence 16, Pitt 13, as Derek Brown works it around the perimeter to Crozier. Pitt mixing it up a bit defensively. They've gone zone that time down man to man. It's like Chad Varga with a little bit too much body picking up his first personal foul as Jamel Thomas checks into the game for Providence. Austin Crozier, Andre Allridge checking in in the backcourt along with Jason Mayle for Vontigo Cummings. Is Jerry McCullough on the bench? Did not get the start, the team's second leading scorer. Ralph Wheeler trying to shake things up here today to see if Pitt loses a seven of their last eight games can get back on the winning track. It's Sham got at the top. Pitt. Over to Michael Brown. Pitt back in a matchup. Matchup 2-3 now. Providence has spotted the seams nicely with their shooters against this matchup. Garces can't get it to go. It's a battle on the boards and well, Jody Sylvester right on that one. And Ralph pleading for the foul, but not going to get it there. He's up and at him on the sidelines. Our officials for today's game, Jody Sylvester, John Cal, and Tom Corbin. Oh, turnover on the inbound play as Shamgod tries to get that quick pass to Ruben Garces. Not a lot of spacing there. You're trying to talk, make a two-foot pass. Very difficult to complete. You really need the eye contact, Doris, to get that one to work. <laughs> Pitt running a weave here at the top of their offensive set. 
Providence has been playing a pretty tough man-to-man -to -man so far. Well, what they've done is they've done a great job with their backcourt extending the pressure. It all starts out front defensively. Michael Gill with the bank shot. He can rise. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Pete Gillen wants to talk this one over early. As the Providence Friars now just up by one point here as the Panthers have made a run for Pitt. We'll be back with more Big East action in just a moment. Welcome back. It's the, it's the Friars by one against the Pitt Panthers as you see some Friar faithful at the backcourt for Pitt off to a good start. Oh, well, McCullough, as we mentioned, not playing, so Willard gets some time. This is off, that was off a solid screen. That was the outside, here's the inside look. Gill, pretty spin move and the kiss off the glass. Tough shot. Yeah, it really is. He's a freshman, as you see, Pitt. They've been out shooting well, and Providence at just 38%. Michael Gill from Washington, D.C. Dunbar in Washington as Providence back out at it. Is they working a weave on the top here as Jason Murdoch is checked into the lineup. Ooh, Michael Brown with a nice jump shot. He got that shot off because of the hard cross, but an interesting note early in this, Pitt has a 7-5 advantage on the boards. We talked about that, Ronnie. If they could hold their own, they could stay in this game. I think it's a real key who can win that battle under the backboards. Both teams matching up. We've got a lot of athleticism. That's Gill again from the top and draining it. That's just a pretty play. The solid screen for him right inside the foul line. And that is his second. That was the two. He had his, I think, big toe on the three-point line as Jamel Thomas, who played very well in the first outing with 18 against Pitt, is in the lineup. That's Jason Murdoch making that two-point field goal as Providence shooting the ball better from the perimeter lately, although the number's not there yet in this game today. I'll tell you what, they're making some substitutions and not missing a beat. Murdoch, it's the first time he touched it. He drains it. Nice job inside, that's Gerald Jordan, the junior center. Junior, well, he's a transfer for Morgan State in the southpaw with the nice drop in that time in the lane. Derek Brown back with it, but it doesn't take much time to get the ball up the floor in this game. No, neither club using much shot clock, that's for sure. Brown, he scored mostly on the baseline. This time comes out high and drains it, his 10th. Boy, he's off to a great start. Derek Brown has just been flowing with those three-point shots as he drains a three-pointer on this one. Good ball movement. Providence, see the key here is some nice penetration huh, by Michael Brown. Well, Michael Brown draws the defense over, gives Derek Brown enough time to get the shot off. You know, Derek Brown, you can tell he's so comfortable right now scoring in so many ways. That time off the nice screen, big. A lot of confidence. Jamel Thomas had fouled on the rebounding action. He was whistled for that. And possession pit. That's a nice recovery there for Providence. Pitt tries to go back door, and Providence defensively gets a hand in the help passing lane. That's Pitt's fifth turnover as Aldridge tried to jam that ball in there. Too much quickness for that. Is Crozier thought about it? <laughs> thought better of it, actually. Oh, nice penetration. Up, but the turnover is Zabilski was not ready for that pass. Looks like a pretty good one by Shamgod. Nice job getting into the heart of the D, but again, Ronnie, you got to know who you're throwing to. And Derek Brown might be able to handle that pass, but you got to know Shabilsky may be not quite that quick. Ralph Willard's got to be a little frustrated early as Pitt picks up yet another turnover as Jason Mill with that quick move on the right wing and Providence pretty good so far. We talked about Sham God, he's running the show. He seems to be gaining more and more confidence at the point for the Providence Friars. That's Jamel Thomas, who also has been playing pretty well. I think you would expect that as the season goes on and, and guys get some more time, become more and more comfortable as you see Pete as always, working the sideline. I don't think that guy sits down. <laughs> <laughs> In the action, staying right with it is Ralph Willard is, and that was a turnover that time by Thomas. Got to get rid of the basketball before too much of that trapping action starts, and this Andre Aldrich back with it. He played very well last year at the point, played nearly every minute of every game with Jerry McCullough out with reconstructive knee surgery a year ago. Gerald Jordan with that turnaround jump shot. It's a battle in there. Tommy Corbin on the call, and it looks like it's going to stay pit basketball. 
Villanova with a convincing win today against Rutgers, number six Villanova. Jason Lawson played very well in that game. And Syracuse ooh, with a very big upset win against Georgetown today. I had to believe Georgetown was going to struggle playing at the Dome. They haven't been playing well of late and dropped one up at the Dome. Well, it's not an easy place to play, but it's always a treat, though, huh? With 30,000 feet as Mel Thomas picks up his second personal foul. Mentioned Michael Gill from DCO way off the mark on that one. And anytime you do that kind of thing on the road, yeah. he gets the hometown fans a little bit involved. He's caught some backboard, I think, at least, but. That's just so embarrassing. You want to get the ball back in your hands as quickly as you can and just touch any kind of iron. Well, he gets the second one to go. Gill has got five points already, though, in this ball game, and he's been impressive off the bench as the Friar fans here try to get their team excited on the floor. Gonna look at a soft 1-3-1 one, one by Pitt. Turnover. And I think they're gonna catch Shamgod with the reach in as he tried to make up for it. A little bit frustrating. They have to recognize what defense they're facing. That was a 1-3-1. One, one. And Pitt able to get their hands on the basketball out front. It's like a 20-second timeout here called by Pete Gillen to just try to control the tempo of this game. The chest pass, the quick hands in there. Nice job by Pitt, they're all over it. And Jason Mayle eventually picking up the ball. Sham got with the reach. Well, I think Providence has got to be careful with the basketball. You've got to recognize what you're facing offensively. That time Pitt changing from the man-to-man, -man, going back to the soft 1-3-1, one, one, and Providence trying to make the pass right into the heart of the D. Spread them out in the 1-3-1. One, Doris, one. what's Pete Gillen talk, talking to his team about right there? A quick 20-second timeout, a couple of quick words of advice? Well, I think he's just saying, hey, let's back it out once we get in the half-court set and, and take a look at what we're facing. No, no need to force the ball right into the heart of the D. And, and the 1-3-1, one, one, spread the floor. Pete Gillen will go with timeouts early in the game to get the message across. We'll see if it works here. And it looks like Crozier right out of that timeout. A little bit too much body with Gerald Jordan inside. Pete Gillen not shy about using his timeouts early. That's for sure. Well, he's not one to wait for the TV to just dictate the tempo of the game. If he sees it, he'll go right with it. Pitt goes right underneath with it. Looks like Providence on the rebound, though. Stepped out of bounds, Pete Gillen. Well, he does get a workout in over there as he checks Derek Brown back into this game. If I'm him, I take my suit coat off because I don't want to buy new suits after every game. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give him to the second half for that, perhaps, in what is starting to look like it's going to be a pretty tight game. Allrich inbounds it to Michael Gill, the freshman. He can rise. Nice rebound by Murdoch as the Friars look to push with Shamgod. Nice up fake by Crozier. Everything but the results on that one. Well, he sold it. He sold it on the pump fake, got the look he wanted, just couldn't drop it home. Vontigo Cummings back the other way, and a good rebound and box by Crozier. Both teams getting one look, Ronnie, and that's it. You gotta shoot the ball pretty well when you only get one chance. Nice job by Murdoch with that long tip out. I think Garst has got a hand on it. Coaches will say, if you can't control it, try to tip it out to right. one of your teammates. It's like Gerald Jordan on the reach. Crozier, very active. In the first meeting between these two teams, Crozier came up with 15 points late in the game to help Providence come up with an impressive victory as Michael Brown checks back into the game for Jason Murdoch. It's the Friars by three points here at the Providence Civic Center. We'll be back for more action after this break. Welcome back to the Civic Center in Providence. Today's Big East game is a copyrighted telecast of Creative Sports Incorporated. Any use, rebroadcast, or other transmission of any or all of this game without the express prior written consent of Creative Sports is prohibited. Well, Doris, it's been uh, an interesting first half so far. I thought Providence was going to pull away early, but Pitt really kind of hanging tough so far. I think you and I talked before the game, and we thought if, if Pitt could hold their own on the boards, which they have done, it's all even at eight. 
they would have a shot. They've also shot the ball extremely well early on. They really have, and Ralph Willard continues to match, match up with the zone defenses, mix up the defenses against Providence. Oh, nice pass to Michael Brown from Derek Brown. Can't get it to go, and that's Garrick Thomas with the board. That was just a great read by Michael Brown. He saw no one at the foul line, gets inside, got the look, but couldn't put it home. Montego Cummings, that's Chad Varga. Oh. Another rebound for Providence. It's Derek Brown to the middle to Sham God. Oh, tough catch. I think he might have walked. He did on that one. <laughs> he most certainly did. It's a good look by Sham God. Pete Gillen up there saying, hey, that's the way to push the basketball. And Sham God, so quick out there, is going to make some of those plays. However, I think he made a good look there. He gave it to Brown a little bit late. Well, Brown is the finisher. He's the guy you want to go to. Gerald Jordan with the bank shot. Crozier gambled. He came up empty on that one. Tell you what, as a lefty, he's got to bring that ball right back into the face of the defense, but got it up. Gerald Jordan from Philadelphia, West Philadelphia High School, transfer from Morgan State with the touch, and suddenly we've got ourselves a one-point golf ball game here with the Friars up by one point. Bit back to the 1-3-1. Who do they look for here with the jump shot, Doris? Well, I think they need to attack on the baseline. Brown was effective early there. Uh, that's an inside play. It's Ruben Garces, and Providence seems to go with their strength this time and gets it into their big 6-9 forward, Ruben Garces for two. When you face the 1-3-1, Ronnie, they're most vulnerable on the baseline, and Providence sends three guys down on, the, on that baseline. You see Brown takes it there. Marcus just reads the defense. Nobody there on the 1-3-1. If you can get the ball over the initial pressure outside, you're going to score against the 1-3-1 zone. Just got to beat them out top. That's the key, some good ball movement there. You see Garces' numbers. That was a personal foul inside on Gerald Jordan. His second is Garces barely catches iron with the free throw. Right back at it. It's Kevin Willard with the matchup here against Shamgod. Montego Cummings, Chad Varga. Out there for Pitt right now with Garrett Thomas and Gerald Jordan. Oh, nice look inside. Actually, Andre Howard has checked into the game for Jordan with a good turnaround there. And he's another one of the five freshmen for Ralph Willard. Solid turnaround. Crozier was there to challenge, but gets it right over him. Well, the tempo of this game at early, pushing up and down right now. Both teams checking each other in the half-court set with Shamgard running the show for the Friars. Oh, nice look on the cut to Derek Brown for a quick basket. Well, Providence not right now. What they're doing well is attacking the seams of the zone. The people on the perimeter are finding where the weaknesses are and getting there, getting solid shots. Oh, good hustle. Michael Brown with the dive. I believe he bats the ball out of bounds. But the hometown crowd here at the Providence Civic Center appreciates that as Pitt will bring the basketball back up the floor for Ralph Willard's club. This is a Pitt team that has struggled lately. They've lost seven of their last eight. They had an overtime loss to then ranked, or of course still ranked number one, UMass. They played at UConn very tough at home. They're looking for some positive answers today. Well, I think they've played solidly against good clubs, Ronnie. They just can't put it together. I think most important is we're gonna get a jump ball here and it will go to Providence. Most important for this club, because they're so young, is to keep playing hard. You don't want guys to start giving it up down the stretch of the season. Not an easy place to come in and try to do that with Providence. No. <laughs> Always tough at home. But I think that man Ralph Willard will keep his troops motivated. Providence looking to build on this three-point lead right now. Penetration by Shamgod. He's got it with a five move to the basket. It's just so tough, can handle the ball, uses the solid cross to beat the defense. Kevin Willard the other way with the kiss. Fouled on the play, and if it was Shamgod. It was indeed Shamgod. He was checking Willard, he put the body on him. That should be number three on Sham. Oh, I think oh, they first. caught I a break three. there and called Garces with oh, that one. Okay. And it did look to me like it was Shamgod. That would have been sure did. rest time if it was number three. But Kevin Willard, nice job so far. He's, you see his numbers coming in, but he, he gets the start in this game, playing with a lot of poise, fundamentally sound. Well, that three-point play cuts the prior lead to just two points here with four and a half to go in the first half as Sham got out there with Garces and Derek Brown, Michael Brown, as well as Austin Crozier. 
Crozier with the ball. I thought Corbin was going to let that go. Crozier hit hard. And he went to the glass. Did a nice job selling this. Watch him just lean back to the middle and then spin off. And just watch the contact right here. Just took the elbow to the face. Bang. Who said this isn't a physical brand of basketball? Is Crozier back up and at him? That was Andre Howard picking up his first personal foul. And Crozier at the line. It's three of four from the line in this game. Make it three of five. He's got six points. Crozier can be a tough matchup problem for the opposition because for a big guy, he can go outside, handle the ball, and shoot the three. Got seven points now in the game, and Providence with some pressure. It's the first time we've seen him go full court press. Nice job by Pitt to attack. Get the look, Varg on the offensive glass. He's really a warrior on the boards for Pitt. He's a kid that just goes after it. And a lot of offensive rebounding is just will and determination. He's really got that when Pitt shoots the basketball. Let's take a look at Pitt against pressure doors. They're, they're looking to attack. You're talking about some guys who are seeing more time because McCullough's out. This is the first time Providence throws it at him. They handle it nicely, get a good look, and then Barker goes to work on the backboards. That was Derek Brown's first personal foul as Chad Barker, a 66% free throw shooter, misses that one. Chad missed a lot of action last year with a wrist injury, but he's really come back with a vengeance this year as he puts the free throw in, and he's now got five points in the ballgame. He's got a solid frame and his tremendous quickness, which I think gets him some looks at the basket. Providence continues to operate against this zone, and what's Pitt in right now, Dwight? Well, I think this is a different look. It's 2-3 Mack, a little trap on the baseline. Oh, a lot of action. Underneath, bodies down, Crozier and Garrett Thomas. Take your pick on this one, Jody Sylvester. Right on top of it, he gets a high five from uh, Derek Brown as Chad Varga picks up his second personal foul as you take a look of amazement. Just <laughs> oh, no question. See a little trap on the baseline and nice job by Garces to spin out and get it to Crozier. Looked like they had him pinned, but he just takes that step. Derek Brown, the junior forward, gets the first one to go. He's from Brooklyn. Really playing well lately for the Friars. This is the Friar team that likes to go inside. They're strong, and Derek Brown really picking up his game. He also a guy that can shoot the ball like Crozier, so you have to respect his jump shooting ability, but we'll take it inside. Has no problem mixing it up. Well, it's Providence now by four in a tight game here in the first half against the Pitt Panthers. Stay with us. We'll be back in a moment. Well, we're back here at the Civic Center in Providence. The Friars up by four points with 3.56 to go. Good battle so far. A lot of Derek Brown and Austin Crozier putting points on the board for the Friars. Well, we talked about their strength being in their front court. You can get a lot of scoring from Garces. Crozier or Brown makes it tough to match up. That shot won't go by Andre Howard. Derek Brown with the strong rebound. Sham got back for the Friars. See who can grab the momentum in the last few minutes of this first half. Kevin Willard matched out there with Sham God. The look to Crozier. He lost it. That's a turnover for the Friars in a first half that's been relatively cleanly played with both teams turning it over seven times. Pete Gillen, both clubs certainly not happy with it. even one or two turnovers, let alone seven, right? <laughs> both clubs shooting the ball well as well, Ronnie. Oh, Chad Varga with the stop. Nice look by Howard from the foul line, and he enjoyed that one. <laughs> I enjoyed that one. Thank you, Varga. <laughs> Just tremendous quickness. You see him go hard on the baseline. Well, Pitt didn't get out of the blocks very quickly in this game, but they play stubborn defense. They hold the opposition in the low 40% range shooting every game, and that's Crozier can't get it, and it's Varga again coming up with a big point. Called his number a lot, but they do a great job keeping the other team just off balance with all those switches defensively. You never know what you're going to face. That's Cummings over to Andre Howard. Howard and Cummings, both freshmen. Kevin Willard, the sophomore. 
Providence matching up man. Oh, good look in there. It's Howard again to Varga. The interior defense right now for Providence not matching up. No, they had the high-low situation. Varga got on the bottom side. Gets an easy look. Pitt again a different look now. I think this is a 2-3 match here. It's over to Sham guy to Crozier. Providence right now kind of stalled offensively. Careful of getting it into the corner against this zone because they like to trap. That's a three. Well, that's Sham God. That's one way to bail out the offense. He's got five in the ball game now. He's a 31% shooter from three-point land, but looked like perfection on that one. Looked pretty confident putting that one up. Kevin Willard kills the dribble. It looks like he's going to have to use a timeout here, and Ralph Willard immediately, as he looks out there at his son, Kevin Willard, says, hey, we're going to take a 20 right here, keep the action. And that's a pretty heads-up play by Kevin Willard to not force the ball inside. Coming up at halftime, we'll have the Big East Wire. We'll have a look at former Pitt star and Orlando Antigua and what he's up to, as well as stats and highlights from the first half of action. Well, there's been a couple of nice plays last a couple of times down by Pitt, getting it inside to Varga. This little high-low situation, and Brown had someone to cover, and Varga sneaks inside. Providence right back at it, though, with the penetration from Michael Brown over to his backcourt mate. Well, if there's one thing that hasn't been consistent for Sham got it's been his shooting, but looks solid there. Providence with four out of seven from three-point land in this first half. Varga inside, and it's Derek Brown with the rebound. Crozier with it, and is Michael Brown, the senior. Only, only man to be captain two years in a row, along with Marquise Bragg, who played several years ago for the Friars, a real leader on this team. I think he does a great job of taking some of the pressure off of Sham got in the backcourt. Jamel Thomas with the baseline jumper, and he's in the box score with his first basket. Been a good first half of action. It's the Friars right now by five. It's Varga. Can't get it, and it's the break for Sham God. Kevin Willard tries to recover on that play, but an opportunistic break there for the Friars. Well, these are guys who love to get out and transition when they can. I thought Crozier was going to overrun this one as he was checking out, but he's going to get a hold of the board. This is the long rebound off the miss by Varga. Yeah, it looked like he was going to take off on that rather than yeah. box out. <laughs> in the right place at the right time. And Sham, nice read, and Willard tries to challenge, but not there in time. Sham got a kid who highly touted coming out of high school, LaSalle Academy in New York City, and he seems to be adjusting well at this point in the season to this level of play. No question about his ability, but his role on the team. He really starts right. to look comfortable out there. Well, I think for kids coming in out of high school, you know, they are the show in high school. They've got to kind of adjust, and they've got other players who can contribute. And for Sham, it was just a matter of time. Everybody knew skill-wise he could play at this level. It was just a matter of him becoming consistent. A lot of times coaches will say with their point guards, they're looking for good decisions. And it takes a while to know what the right read is when you're on the floor. You're talking about guys making, you know, split-second decisions. It's not something you can learn. It's more of a feel thing. And as you get time and you get adjusted to this level, Sham got has really been consistent of late. That's why Providence has won. Well, he made both free throws. He's got seven, and it's a turnover by Pitt. Bullet pass to Garrett Thomas, and he can't handle it. Providence on a 7-0 run over the last two and a half. And a differential three shot clock and game clock, so they'll take this down as far as they can, unless they get a great look. Michael Brown up top. Shamgod has sat. Do you look for Michael Brown with eight to ten seconds to go to penetrate? Well, I think you look for him to penetrate and then try and get it to Crozier around. He's just got so much offensive skill for Providence. Anybody can score. Ralph Willard looking to trap shot clock. Game clock both winding down. It's a long one by Brown. Won't go. Oh. And the one thing you don't want is the foul. Llewellyn Cole had checked game for Providence number 42, and Cole commits the personal foul on the rebounding action with just four ticks of the clock to go. Cole just being aggressive, but commits the over the top, trying to get the tip. 
pretty good defensive adjustment there by Pitt. It looked like they changed at the last moment, forcing Providence to take the long jump shot. Right, good read. They just called the little trap right when the shot was about to go off, just trying to disrupt them. Andre Howard at the line. He's played quality minutes. He can't get the front end to go, and Providence needs a quick one here. One second to go. It's a long one by Murdoch. Can't get that one to drop. And that'll do it here in the first half at the Providence Civic Center with the Friars leading the Panthers of Pittsburgh by seven points. Stay with us for exciting halftime action and activities in just a moment. Welcome back at halftime at the Providence Civic Center. It's the Friars leading the Panthers of Pittsburgh by seven points in an evenly played contest. Hi, I'm Ron Perry, play-by-play -play person today, along with our analyst, Doris Burke. Doris, um, even for most of that first half, but Providence seemed to be able to solve that pit defense down the stretch with a nice run. I thought it was very evenly played, not a lot of turnovers on either side, but again, Providence switching those defenses, able to come up with that run, put them ahead by five. Well, we'll see what happens when we come out for the second half. Tightly played first half here at the Providence Civic Center. What happens to a basketball player who doesn't like to fly? We'll find out on our Big East Bulletin, brought to you by U.S. Air. Phil Hickey has never enjoyed flying, but it was not until a rough flight back home for Christmas that his reluctance to fly became outright fear. Hickey tried one more time, flying to Philadelphia for the Villanova game, but he has not been able to get on a plane since that flight. It's just something that developed recently, and I'm not really sure why, but I'd like to take care of it. I think maybe a lot of the fear comes from a lack of understanding, and I'm trying to understand more about the plans and a lot of praying. Hickey is already a very important part of the Irish basketball team. Some fear he will transfer to a school where the basketball team does not fly much. But Hickey told me that fear is unfounded. So I'm definitely sure I want to stay here and beat this. this is, I mean, that's not even a question in my mind. Even if Hickey cannot get on another plane this season, he may make some road games using other forms of transportation. Well, flying can certainly be no, be no fun especially in Big East where you've got to travel. Well, for the Big East U.S. Air Halftime Wire, God Sham God for Providence, second Friar to win the Rookie of the Week Award. Jamel Thomas got it a week ago. Kerry Kittles from Villanova, great season he's having. Third time this year to win the Player of the Week Award in Georgetown. They're just really rolling this year, leading the conference in seven statistical categories. Well, it's halftime here at the Providence Civic Center. Stay with us. We'll be back with more halftime activities in just a moment. Former Pitt standout, Orlando Antigua, a fine player at Pitt, at least doing something interesting with his post-college career playing for the Harlem Globetrotters. You won't want to miss this next segment. Take a look. Let's take a look at the current conference standings. Remember to cast your vote. Hey, Georgetown looking pretty good right now, Doris. Are you a betting man? <laughs> <laughs> Can Seton Hall or Miami get back? And how about if we take a look at the Big East 6? That was the Big East 7. Oh, UConn, huh? Well, I mean, Connecticut, those are two huge wins or two huge losses, rather, for Villanova. But they're right behind, and there's BC. Well, cast your ballot. This is halftime at the Providence Civic Center. The Friars up by seven against the Pitt Panthers. Big East basketball, stay with us for more halftime activities after this break. We're back. It's halftime. Providence College 39, the Pitt Panthers 32 here at the Providence Civic. Let's take a look at some highlights. And Providence had some good ball movement at different times in this first half. Well, we thought Shamgod would be critical in this game. Decision making here. He gets the open look. Drains that three. Looked terrific from three point land on that one. And we thought a key in this game would be Pitt inside. And one of the key players all year long for them, but really coming on strong lately, Chad Varga. A tremendous quickness, just gonna take the high-low pass here and sends it home. Well, that'll be a key for Pitt to continue with that kind of inside play. Chad Varga with the slam dunk. Statistically, Pitt shot the ball very well in the first half at 54%. 
Providence with the looks from three. The free throw advantage goes to Providence. The rebounding we thought would be a key, even up. Well, we thought if they could hold their own, we've said it a few times, if they could hold their own on the boards, they'd be all right. Add to that their great shooting. Hey, if Providence doesn't go on this run, and we're even up. Well, we've got ourselves a good one here. We'll see who can take control to start the early second half. Well, we'll be back with exciting second half action. Stay with us. We'll be back with you in just a moment. It's Providence against Pitt. Well, welcome back to the Providence Civic Center. It's time to begin the second half of action. Providence up by seven against the Pitt Panthers. Let's set the lineups for you. It's Kevin Willard and Garrett Thomas along with Vontigo Cummings, three-man backcourt. Mark Blount in the middle and Chad Varga up front for Pitt. Crozier, Michael Brown, Ruben Garces, Derek Brown, and Shamgard out there for Providence. It's Pitt basketball. Good look there for Pitt. Ran Thomas off the double screen low. Montego Cummings can't get it to go. And we'll see who can grab some momentum here to start the second half. As Shamgott out to Derek Brown. The look inside to Garces. Well, he's got a weight advantage in there against Blount. Blount's got the height, and that time the strength wins out in quickness over the size. Just take a look at solid shoulders. This is Brown making the entry pass. Gets the step on Blount. And when you give up some size like that, Garces just muscles his way to the hoop. Well, Garces is strong inside. He had two points in the first half. Blount picks up his first personal. Garces, strong rebounder at better than seven a game, although his stats in the first half quiet. You can say he's really into the flow of this game, huh? He catch the rim on that one? Uh, he did the same thing in the first half, barely touched iron. Ruben Garces, junior college transfer. He's had some big rebounding games as he makes the second of two free throws as Kevin Willard brings the ball up for Pitt. Again, we haven't seen Jerry McCullough and probably won't hear today at the Providence Civic Center as Ralph Willard shakes up the lineup. And really, they played solidly without him, Ronnie. Oh, Cummings can't get that one to go. Blount didn't get it. Yeah, but Willard has been solid at point. It's Derek Brown from three. He's got it. Got to find your shooters in defensive transition. Brown loves the baseline three. He's having a huge game for Providence. And Ralph Willard wants to call a quick one. He's going to use a 20-second timeout. He's going to really get after people, it looks like, in this huddle. A little bit frustrated here, just a failure to match up. Nobody talking defensively, and Brown spots up. you got to find your shooters. Well, Derek Brown is really on a roll in this game with 17 points, and Ralph Willard, quick timeout here to start the second half, Doris. I think it's a solid timeout, though. You don't want to get things get out of hand on the road, and he can feel the momentum, and the crowd starting to get behind Providence. I think it's a solid timeout. Suddenly an 11-point game, double-digit lead for Providence. So one thing you don't want your kids to come out lax to start a half. You're going to bury a, get yourself out of this hole now. Well, we'll see what can happen defensively, offensively right now. It's Willard. Oh, the stuff by Varga. <laughs> he got some springs in his uh, leg. No question. And some great quip is just explosive off his feet. Michael Brown looking to penetrate. He's going to stay Providence on the tip. Chad Varga's been in double figures in his last six games. Pete Gillen looking on and make that seven now for Varga with double figures again here today. He's got 11 in this one. Two, three match again for the trap in the corner. It's Crozier with the penetration. Michael Brown from three. Can't get it. Oh, there's Varga again with another board. He plays big inside. Kevin Willard with the quick push. Varga with the look, turns it over, Brown the steal, and he turns it right back over. An unpopular call here at the Civic Center, not surprisingly, we're in Providence at the Civic Center today. Gerald Jordan, Gerald Jordan will get back into the lineup for Pitt. Mark Blount, the freshman, the seven-footer, gets a rest. Is Jordan, the junior center. Mentioned it in the first half. He transferred to Pitt from Morgan State. 
He's a southpaw. Jordan all sorts of room, not respecting the jump shooting ability. Uh, Willard with the look, and Jordan had already turned for rebounding position, and Ralph Willard looks on and says, hey, that's probably one you can just pop from out there. We'll bang the backboards to his son, Kevin. Yeah, got to shoot that. Virginia Tech, a final. They've beaten Xavier today. Virginia Tech, number 11, with the victory. Sham God with the good look inside the Crozier, Michigan. And you can see Texas Tech with a victory today as well. Crozier with a good move that time, and he does a lot of positive things for the Friars. Pitt right now scrambling to stay on their feet in this one. Providence with a good start to the second half as Jason Mayle checks into the ball game for Pitt for Vontigo Cummings. Providence got that little run going down the stretch of the first half, kind of carried it over here into the second half. I think they finally settled in. You know, they got a lot of different looks defensively, but they've settled in offensively, making good decisions. See Gerald Jordan with his third personal foul inside for Pitt is Crozier. He's got nine in the game, buries two free throws. Pitt right now on the road. Needs to find some good offense as Kevin Willard, the sophomore, continues to run the show for the Panthers. That's Varga into Jordan. Oh, nice move. Can't get it, though. Did such a great job to get into the heart of the D. Spins off. He'll keep it. Garrick Thomas inbounding. Problems with some pressure on that inbounds. Both teams really trying to get a win here today. Vargo with the jump shot, gets it to go down. He's got 13 in the game. Pitt at four and seven in Big East play. Providence at five and seven. Really trying to get this W today to try to push things as we're into February, the stretch run for Big East play. I think Providence feels like it's critical for them to take all their home games. I think they, their staff feels if they can get these things at home, they might have a good shot at the NCAA tournament. Providence all over the action inside. And that's an advantage for Providence as you get a look at Chad Varga, but Providence with the size up front, Derek Brown, Austin Crozier, and Ruben Garces. Three, six, nine guys. Garces and Brown with some bulk all over the backboards. Derek Brown, I guess, is listed at 6'6". Six, six. He plays like he's about 6'9", six, 6'10", six, though, at times. He's a guy that's got great springs and does a nice job timing when the ball is coming off the rim. Garrick Thomas committed that personal foul. His second foul in the game is Derek Brown gets the first free throw to go and we talked about him at the beginning. Doris, he's really coming up big again. Over the last 10 games, really picking up his numbers. Yeah, we talked a lot about adjustment today, Ronnie. And as these guys get some playing time in the conference, start to see what things are about, then they start to perform like they can. Confidence plays such a big role too. Providence has been on a roll. They've won four and six. Nice look by Mayo. And it's Garrick Thomas with the finish, and he's got a chance for a three-point play. Well, he goes strong, and if you're Crozier, you want a challenge, but you don't want to put the body on him. Give him the two, don't give him the three here. This is just on defensive help. Crozier comes over and he had position down there. Crozier with the personal foul. That's his second in the game. Boy, some good things happen when your backcourt people can get penetration against the defense. Just put so much pressure on the defense to kind of adjust and recover and give help. Somebody's going to be open when you get by the initial defender. Garrick Thomas completes the three-point play. He's got eight in the game. Ruben Garces takes a seat. And Jamel Thomas, who played so well the first time these two team meet, teams met, is back in the game. It's Providence by eight right now at the Civic Center in Providence, Rhode Island. Sham got over to... Crozier with a little shake and big move. Can't get it though. It's been no call though. Inside to Varga. Oh, nice turnaround. Just so tough. 15 for Varga. Doing it. Scoring and rebounding the basketball. Just so explosive. Nice look inside by Pitt. And as Ralph Willard did moments ago, Pete Gillen says, hey, 
I'm going to talk it over with my team, take a 20-second timeout. Suddenly, we've got ourselves a six-point game here at the Providence Civic Center. Kind of a nice surge by Pitt. Well, Varga has been the answer all year and certainly has been today. Seven of 12 from the field. And I'm telling you, Ronnie, these haven't been easy looks. He's spun off the defense all afternoon. Well, he's a strong kid. He likes to go up, and there's one thing about Varga, no hesitation no. <laughs> off the boards or shooting, huh? He goes right after it. Well, he knew he had a challenge. I mean, Providence is so strong physically in their front court, but he has not backed down. I should take a look at his numbers on the afternoon. Well, it's a game of adjustments, and the coach is working it over there. We've got Providence with a good start to the second half, and now Pitt right back in it. You see the coach is getting involved. Willard took that 20-second timeout. His club goes on the run, and now Pete going to answer with his own timeout. Let's see what Providence does off this. It's a look inside to Crozier. Providence would like to take advantage if they could of their size. They try to go inside that time. Crozier with the look, and it's Jordan, Gerald Jordan, as we mentioned moments ago with three, has just picked up his fourth personal foul. Well, we're at the Providence Civic Center. It's the Friars by six early in the second half. We'll be back with you in just a moment. Back to the Providence Civic Center. It's the Friars by six. The 15.46 to go, and Providence got off to a good start to begin the second half. Pitt bounces right back. We've got ourselves a good one. Well, Pitt able to hang around a lot of games, even the games they've lost this year, they've been in because they play solid defense. There's Crozier inside. That's for sure. They tend to make it difficult for the opponents, a lot of matchups, and people tend to not get great shooting numbers against this Pitt defense. And they are in this one. They got themselves in a little bit of a hole, but now just down six. It's like a 2 3 match, perhaps, here. Oh, nice up fake. It's Jamel Thomas. Oh, he got swallowed up by Varga. Good hustle, though, by Jamel Thomas, able to get back defensively. I thought it looked like he had made the great move with two crossovers, but Varga, the great defense. And we're going to get a look. Watch the hard cross. Bang. Gets himself the look, but oh. the man he beat comes back and blocks it. That was one which was all ball. But he hustled back defensively, and it's pit basketball, though. As Varga handles it, that's Garrick Thomas, Jason Mayle in the game for Pitt. See if Providence can get something going inside, but it's from the perimeter of Shamgod. That's a quick shot by Sham. Well, I think they're going to get Providence climbing on the back on the boards. And Pete, perhaps a little disagreement there. But a quick, quick shot, as you see, Jamel's got three. But that's a quick look when you don't have rebounding numbers and you've got the lead. I'm not sure you want that kind of shot. Pitt's a team that is even on the boards this year with their opposition. And right now, Gerald Jordan on the bench with four. Oh, nice pass. It's Varga. That'll be goaltending. Hey, that's a, that's a pretty play. They run Willard off the double screen and send someone back door to the hole. Pretty play. Now suddenly Pitt, the Panthers right back in this one, down by four. Civic Center getting revved up again. And it's Shamgod back for Providence with Michael Brown. Another strip. Nice job by Willard. Oh, good rejection by Derek Brown. But that ball hit the baseline. Good action that time. Great exchange there. Looked like Derek Brown was going to save that and go back to Providence. But here we go on the three on one. And Mayo gets the shot. You see Brown come into the picture and throw it away. Jason Mayo from three point land is flat with that one. And Pitt on the rebounding action. Commits the personal foul, and I think it's Garrick Thomas. That's three on Garrick Thomas, and suddenly Pitt starting to mount some personal fouls out there. Well, again, they're switching defenses. That time, after the 1-3-1 the one, one look for Providence a couple times, and they go quick man-to-man, -man and Providence doesn't adjust. Seems like Sham got different times in this game. Is going to pull it back up, try to recognize what defense yeah, exactly. Pitt changing yeah. into. Yeah, set your, set your club offensively. Make sure they know what they're in. 
Nice look inside. Jamel Thomas getting it in there. And this is not a big front line out there right now for Pitt with Chad. Varga out there, Andre Howard. It's a bigger front line for Providence. Yeah, it is, and I think Providence, you should see them go to their strength. You know, they've got some guys who can score when they get the ball in the front court. You need to get it to your post. You know, Pittsburgh's got to worry about foul trouble. We may see Blount come back into this game because they've got some kids in foul trouble. And that was the second personal foul for Andre Howard. We mentioned moments ago that Gerald Jordan had picked up his fourth personal foul. And there's Jerry McCullough, the point guard, the senior, averaging 13 a game, sitting today. Didn't start as Ralph Willard, coach's decision, says, hey, we've lost seven of eight. I'm going to really shake it up today. He's giving some younger guys an opportunity. When you're struggling, you know, coach's philosophies may change during the year. Yep. You look for a change. You look for a spark. Two free throws by Jamel Thomas. He's got four of the Friars are up by six as Kevin Willard sets the Panther offense. He's got a double screen up there with Varga and Howard. Oh, up and under. Great tip, Varga again. 19. Shows up everywhere. Sham got right back. He charged on that one. Andre Howard took it. Two questionable decisions by Shamgod. He came down in transition and shot the three, and they're a little over penetration as he picks up his third. That's three fouls on Shamgod. Well, the Providence Civic Center, the pitch is hanging right around in this game. It's a four point game. Providence out in front. The Providence Friars leading by four in a tough Big East battle with the Pitt Panthers today. Again, some good play inside here during this run. I'll tell you what, Willard has been solid at the point guard spot, stepping in for McCullough. And you see the great tip by Varga. 19 for him. And this is just a different angle. Here he comes off the screen and tough shot, but look who comes into the picture. Bang. Well, he's got good position in there, and Providence comes out of their timeout with some pressure against Pitt. Willard and Jason Mail in the backcourt right now. Barger Howard underneath with Michael Gill playing the swing spot. Another turnover for Pitt. Nail just picks up his pivot fit, didn't have the jump shot, so puts it on the floor. Pitt's got 11 turnovers in the game, and when you're playing catch up basketball, you gotta take good care of it, but right now, Pitt put themselves right back into the game. I think they know they're in this one. Their confidence has steadily picked up as the afternoon has worn on. They are feeling good. Looks like Providence is trying to dump it inside, Doris. Well, I think they need to attack in the front court. They've got, that's where their strength is, Ronnie. They need to get it to Crozier and Thomas and let them go. Oh, nice move. It's Crozier. Good call. With the penetration to the basket, he's got a chance for a three-point play. Nice offense that time by the Friars. You know, the Providence staff coming into the game was concerned that they were relying too much on the jump shot when you've got guys like Crozier who can put it on the floor. And look at that finish. Boy, quick move in there by Crozier. Able to get the job done inside. He just faces up, puts it on the floor, and has to beat two Panthers. It's like Crozier's tough to defend. We talked about him before. He's, he's got some good numbers that he can shoot from the outside, but he's also tough getting it to the basket. That was Howard with the personal foul. His pitch front line picks up the foul. He's got three. Crozier in the ball game now. Completes the three-point play. He's got a dozen, and the Friars are pressuring. When the province needs buckets, you can usually count on Crozier or Derek Brown to get it, and Crozier doing it right now. I think they caught Michael Brown on the trap. Kind of a nice adjustment by Pete Gillen out of that timeout. He comes out with some full court pressure to try to extend the lead in this game. And that's the fourth personal foul on Jamel Thomas on the play. Correction, it was not Michael Brown. Jamel Thomas with four. Thomas staying with a man-to-man. Crozier and Varga going at it on the block. Crozier does a nice job. He got top side, gets a hand on the ball. That'll be an interesting match as we come down the stretch of this one. 
Crozier just can't get that one to go with the nice drive. The path just opened up for him that time. Now it's just a great series for Crozier. He's putting the body on on the defensive end of things. Gets top sides, gets a hand on it, causes the steal. And we're going to get a look. This is off his play on the other end. Well, that's Varga with the personal foul, too. That's his third foul. Got Varga with three, Andre Howard with three, and we talked about it, but Jordan with four. So the front line for Pitt, picking up the personals, and Providence has got to be dumping it inside to get them into that kind of foul trouble. Jordan back in. You had said early on, Ronnie, that this club presents matchup problems because their front court can do so many things. You've got to respect their jump shooting ability, challenge that, but then you open yourself up to what we just saw, the penetration. Crozier with a dozen in the game, and this is a Providence team that, as he gets the second one on this winning streak, they've been shooting the three well, opening up, apparently, things for their inside people as well. Again, Providence goes a little full court pressure. Just changing the look for Pitt. Pitt able to break pressure, but unable to score against it as we see Kevin Willard running the alley-oop attempt here to Varga. And that wasn't a difficult enough shot for Varga, but they stay with it. Great job by Varga just to catch the basketball because two problems defenders on the block. It's a jump ball situation, possession arrow. Looks like it's going to favor the Friars, and it does. Ruben Garces is coming back into the game for Crozier, and Crozier having a nice second half for himself. He had seven at halftime, and he's added another six here in the second half. Well, Pittsburgh is going to take a timeout, and Providence with another surge here, up by eight at the Providence Civic Center. We've got a good one. Stay with us. Well, we're back at Providence. The Friars leading the Pitt Panthers by eight. We're in the second half. This is a tradition-laden program here, Doris, at Providence. Well, the fans have certainly expect a lot from their players as you see some great names. Lenny Wilkins, of course, the coaching great, leads the NBA in all-time coaching victories. Ernie D, Billy Donovan doing some head coaching, played for Rick Pitino. And how about Providence in the NBA, huh? Tied with Syracuse. It's a great recruiting tool. Coach Gillen will show those numbers often. Eric Murdoch would lift things up here at Providence playing in the NBA. Dickie Simpkins, a lot of fine players. Three-point attempt by Jamel Thomas, falls short. Pitt just keeps hanging around in this game, down by eight. But they need some offense, and they have not really found answers shooting from the perimeter. It's been pretty much all Varga inside. Yeah, that's been the story all year, really. They haven't been able to find somebody to consistently score from outside. And, you know, that's been a problem. Providence can drop people down on Varga, double team, and make it difficult. Michael Gill getting the basket there, cutting Providence's lead to six. Michael Brown now with Jason Murdoch. Jason Murdoch in the game for Sham God, running the point. A little soft 1-3-1 one, one that Providence is facing now. Pretty good movement by Providence this time. It's Murdoch from three. He's got it. Say what he did the same thing in the first half. Not seeing a lot of minutes, but when he comes in, he's ready to shoot the ball. It's oh, his second three. Whatever happened to that? Feel it a few times. <laughs> hey, come on right out and drain it, huh? <laughs> Michael Brown. Picks up the personal foul. The fans saw some left arm push by Andre Ulrich. That's the first personal on Michael Brown. Take a look at it. Michael Brown loves to defend, and that's a very good call by the official. Michael Brown not even close to having position. And you're not going to get that weak hand push off very often. Officials used the term, you're riding him, and it appeared that's what he did right there as Pitt tries to operate against this Providence zone right now. Gerald Jordan playing with four personal fouls. The 6'10 junior center drops that one. He's got six in the game. He's been mostly back to the basket all game. That time facing up from 15. A sloppy play right here by Providence against this matchup. It's like a 1-2-2 match that Pitt is throwing now. 
I think it's confusing Providence a little bit as they try to set. Well, it is, and if you take a look at that foul line area just down below the foul line, if Providence sends a cutter to that spot, they should get the easy eight-foot jump shot, Ronnie. That's exactly right. They try to penetrate on that one with the dish over to Garces. Jump ball called by Jody Sylvester. It'll be pit possession. You know, and when Providence made that late first half run, Ronnie, that was one thing they were doing. They were sending cutters to the seams of the zone. You should take a look at turnover numbers. And right now, they're not getting that. They're playing perimeter basketball, just moving the ball in the perimeter. They need to attack the heart of the zone. We'll see who can try to get the ball to the basket better. Crozier way off the Jordan. The jumper by Varga for three. He has done it all inside out. 22 now for Varga. Boy, he's just been the offensive show. Murdoch with the split that time over to Derek Brown. Take a look at the foul line area. You've got to get someone on the foul line, get the ball there, go high, low, and attack. Sham got back into the lineup. Ruben Garce is back out there as well. It's Derek Brown, can't get it. Andre Ulrich tries to get the rebound and walks with that one and some rough action on the boards that time. A nice job by Shamgod to put the pressure on here. Pretty good ball movement this time, it seems, by Providence. And against the zone, you want to make them work. And look at the foul line area. You see Crozier going in there, and there's the jumper. And nice job by Shamgod to go after that. Well, we're back at it, and Jason Murdoch makes a good penetration against that matchup zone defense. Able to draw the foul on that one with the good look, getting it inside. Well, Murdoch hasn't gotten many minutes, but very solid stepping on the floor at the backcourt for Providence. It was Michael Gill with the reach in Providence, huh? With the free throw, huge advantage. Must be pumping that ball inside today, Doris. Oh yeah, attack inside, and they've got to get into some foul trouble. And you get to the line that many times, you should win ball games. Andre Ulrich picking up the personal foul that time. Is Jason Murdoch able to get the first one to go? But not the second. Providence stays man as Aldrich now running the offense for the Pitt Panthers. Gerald Jordan out there playing with four personal fouls. We're only talking about a two-possession game. The lead is just five for Providence, so Pitt is hanging around. Yeah, they've been doing that, it seems, the whole game. They won't go away. Aldrich with the penetration. That's a tie-up. And again, the possession in favor of Providence. Aldrich seemed to get very close that time to Jordan on the penetration. Talk a Ralph lot of, Willard all over it, huh? Yeah, you talk a lot about spacing offensively. You want to spread the defense out. Pitt seems unable to get over that hump, though, Ronnie. They get themselves to down just four or five, but then can't get over. Providence, a team that has been very tough over the years at home. Pitt fell behind early in this one. It's been an uphill battle. Crozier nearly lost that one. Shamgod with the penetration, it's Derek Brown. Crozier with the board. Well, that's a big call, they're gonna call Varga inside with the body foul. And if that is on Varga, that's gonna be his fourth personal foul. And with 7.51 to go, Ralph Willard's got some decisions to make. And this is a guy, as you see Corbin, discussing with Varga what the situation was, but he's a guy they can't lose, and we're gonna take a look at it. Crozier takes the long board here and puts it on the floor. And you're going to see Varga come in. That's a good call. It looked like he had decent position, but at the end leans in. And that's a big personal foul with Varga with four. And Gerald Jordan also playing right now with four as Crozier makes the front end of the foul shooting opportunity. He's got some good numbers again today. See, 14 and five. You know, officials used to talk a lot about verticality. That was a buzzword for a long time. And now you see him leaning in. That's a foul that still is called. If you lean in, you're going to get called. Crozier's at his average with 15. He's got eight second half points. Varga from three points. Oh! 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 <laughs> Jordan sends it down with authority. Boy, if that was at home at the Fitzgerald Fieldhouse, where I've been many times where Finn plays on campus, the yeah. crowd would be going wild right now. 
Remember those, uh, they used to have those dunk meters or whatever it was when they had the, the pit team with Jerome Lane, remember that? That would have ranked high. Remember Lane breaking a backboard yes. once at Fitzgerald. Crozier with it up top. Derek Brown as Pitt tries to get a stop right here. Oh, good up fake by Crozier. Can't get it. Who else with the rebound? Chad Varga. Garrett Thomas the other way from three. Sham God to Derek Brown. He charged on that one. Crozier was out in front of the pack and is visibly upset. They didn't get the ball on that one. Sham God tries to get it there. Crozier's out there. And this is just too packed here, huh? Well, Sham God leads Brown into that foul. Again, decision making, and Sham will be up and down all year, but led Brown into that foul. Derek Brown with two personal fouls, and the plot thickens here with just better than six and a half to go. I thought Sham made the good decision. He spotted Crozier too late, so he doesn't try and force it, but then he makes a second pass to Brown. Exactly. Varga can't get it to go as Crozier tips the ball. With some electricity in the air here at the Providence Civic Center is Kevin Willard with the ball. And again, that's going to go against Sham on the reach in. You can't try and strip Willard. He's too solid with the basketball. He's had a good floor game today for Pitt, and that time penetrating. And Sham God picks up his fourth personal foul. And that's critical for Providence because. Bo Larrigan is dressed, but they were going to use him only if there was an emergency today. Certainly would be an emergency if Sham God picks up one more. Bo Larrigan with a broken bone in his left hand, suffered in a game against West Virginia, has missed the last five. Kevin Willard makes the first free throw. He's got eight in the game. He's a 67% free throw shooter. He's got them both. Eight and four assists, so he's been very solid. That's a three-point game here. Prior possession. Again, they'll face the matchup zone. Who do they look for here, Doris? Well, I think you need to send a cutter to the foul line and try and get it to the heart of the defense and go to Crozier or Brown on the baseline. They've been effective there all afternoon. Sham God with the ball. Michael Brown. That's a three-pointer that he can't get to go, and the long rebound control by Garrett Thomas. Well, and all of a sudden, Proud is getting one look. Pitt is doing an outstanding job on the defensive glass. Playing in that zone right now. They've got people in foul trouble. Well, you rebound. Coaches will sometimes say they rebound better out of zones because you're sitting in a set position, and you know if somebody comes in and cuts, you've got, a, you've got that responsibility. Kevin Willard for wow. three-point land. Really playing a solid game for Pitt in this game. He got the start. He's got a dozen, and we've got ourselves a tie ball game. And Pete Gillen says, hey, let's talk this thing over. Well, it's the Providence Civic Center. The Friars and the Panthers all tied up at 59. We'll be back. Providence is out of timeouts. We're all tied up, 59-59. Kevin Willard, huh? Tell you what, given an opportunity, look what the kid's doing, bang. You talked about Varga being an intense competitor. This guy's got his club fired up. Well, we've got five and a half to go. Kevin Willard's done a great job at point in the game set. Pitt still has two timeouts left. Neither team has any 30-second timeouts. It's a bonus situation right now with Pitt's got 10 team fouls for Providence, but Providence out of timeouts. And we were talking at the break that uh, sometimes when you use your timeouts, somewhat not judiciously, I will say. You can hurt yourself down the stretch of a game, and Providence now, if this one continues to be tight, could be in some trouble. Michael Brown at the top right now with Sham God on the left wing, and Derek Brown on the right. It's Crozier for three. Comes up short, but there's Jamel Thomas. Oh! Crozier's the guy you want to shoot it, but Thomas, nice job getting inside position. Friars with a two-point lead, we're under five to go. And that ball went out off of all Ridge's foot. Credit Michael Brown with the tough D. Tell you what, all year long and over his entire career, Mike Brown plays very solid defense there, puts the pressure on, causes the turnover. Big play. Well, you get late in games, and coaches will tell you you need stops defensively, and Providence right. just got one. 
And the pass by Crozier over Derrick Brown's head, going away from the basket. So Providence returns the favor. That's a tough pass to complete. And again, Pitt so tough, so stingy defensively. They really do keep themselves in ball games. Well, Kevin Willard's been very solid at point. The sophomore transfer from Bowling Green. It's into Garrick Thomas. Crozier with the rejection. Oh, nice stop. <laughs> it's just a great block. Looked like he had position and... Well, they're alive here at the Providence Civic Center. Closing in on four to go. It's a game of possessions. Crozier on the baseline. Got fouled on the play and Garrick Thomas got his hand up. He kept it up. Did he do that so that one of his big people didn't pick up another personal? <laughs> Seemed very anxious to get that one. And we're going to get a look at a great defensive play here as Crozier and help. Tell you what, that's making up for mistakes right there on that block. As you see, Thomas checking out with his fourth. And Crozier always wants to take the big shot offensively. Providence, last three possessions, he's gotten a look at the basket. This time comes away with some foul shots. Now he's got the first free throw. Vontigo Cummings, the freshman in the game. And Ralph Willard with a three guard lineup with Willard, Cummings, and Ulrich out there handling the ball. Nice numbers for Crozier. 11 of those 16 from the free throw line. Huge advantage for Providence in this game. They've got the size advantage. They've gone down to the paint area frequently. Well, I think that's something their staff wanted to do from the get-go in this one. Attack inside. They knew they had the advantage there. A lot of screening action by Pitt up top. It's Willard. It's Ulrich from three. He's got it. Mike Brown caught on the screen. You saw him come into the picture late. Just could not get over the top. That's Ulrich's first basket of the game. He's a senior. Showed a lot of poise on that one. And again, it's a one-point game. Providence possession with Sham God and Michael Brown. Providence working some clock now with Jamel Thomas nailing the three-point shot. It's a game of threes right now. <laughs> it's a little two-man basketball for Providence exchanging out top. Jamel Thomas with nine in the game. We'll see if Pitt can answer. Two-possession game, three to go. Willard with the penetration. Michael Brown to Derek Brown. Foul from behind. It looked like Cummings. I think the house would have come down if Derek <laughs> Brown sent that one through the net. No question. Good foul. Brown looking for the intentional. And we're going to get a look at Jamel. A little two-man basketball out top. Gets the open three. Takes some courage to shoot that one. Really does. He's a freshman. I tell you, these kids don't play like they're freshmen. That's the sophomore, Willard. And this is in transition. Mike Brown, nice job to get his head up. And Brown, you see the quickness to get out front. Good solid foul. That's the fourth personal foul on Vontigo Cummings. Derek Brown. Continues to produce. Able to stretch. get that to go. And they gave him an intentional. So Providence, two shots and the basketball. And you talk about a huge momentum swing. It was 63-62. It is now 68-62, and Providence will have the ball. Well, that's a big, big play. On the replay, it looked like Cummings went for the arm, but any time a player gets up in the air like that, you've got to be very careful that the legs don't come out from under the intentional. Let's see if Providence can turn this into a four or maybe a five-point play. This is a huge possession. Well, you've got a full 35. I think if you're Providence, you want to use it. Oh, they nearly turn it over. Pitt really trapping right now. Well, they've got to come out and extend the defense and put some pressure on. Sham God with the penetration. Kevin's got to be careful here. Going after the official pretty hard, pleading his case. That'll do it out there for Gerald Jordan. He played for a number of minutes out there with four personal fouls. That'll be his fifth. Pete Gillen's really gone to that bench of his frequently in this game, pounding inside with penetrating moves. And the first casualty for Pitt is Gerald Jordan. We've been talking about it. We've really just been waiting for someone to foul out. What a nice rotation Providence has in the front court to be able to check Jamel Thomas in. 
and Garces. Just so solid, they're gonna get people in foul trouble. Garrett Thomas checks into the game. And a relatively small lineup out there right now for Pitt. Pitt's gonna need to look for the outside shot, so Ralph Willard countered. Jordan's fouling out with Garrett Thomas. Sham God gets the first one to go. He's got eight in the game to go with three assists, and he's been playing solid basketball of late for the Friars. Look at that huge advantage for Providence in this game. 26 to six on made free throws, 32 to nine on attempts, and it's just been a case of pounding away inside, getting to the line. It's like a, fi a fighter just going to the belly so many times. Eventually, you're gonna wear someone down. Pitt really needs one here. They're down eight, 2.40 to go. They can find Varga. He's their man. Crozier's got the assignment. Dished it off that time, and Derek Brown commits the personal, and Garrick Thomas with the cut to the basket. Be a good look for Pitt because you get two free throws in the game clock is stopped, it becomes a time management situation now. Probably as big a key as any to just stop that clock. Free throws always critical, late stages of a game. He gets the first one, the friendly roll. Thomas with nine in the game now. You see Pitt coming with some pressure perhaps, late in this one now. Well, they've turned it up a notch defensively in this second half, and they are indeed going to a little full court. It's like a little full court man-to-man, -man, though. This is no trapping. Well, it looked like Garrett Thomas riding Crozier that time. He's the guy you don't want to put on the line. Anybody but Crozier for Providence, just so solid. Now watch a jinx him here. That'll do it for Garrett Thomas. Ralph Willard's guys, we've been saying it, have been playing with foul difficulties. Gerald Jordan's gone out of the game, and now Garrett Thomas with his fifth. It was just a matter of time. Pitt hung in there until about the two and a half minute mark remaining, and now Willard's gotta find some answers from his bench. Willard hit the three, tied this ball game up. Not Ralph Willard, but Kevin yeah. Willard with the three. Jason Mail back into it, and it's been a nice run for Pete Gillen's club. They've been able to pull away late in this one, but still a six-point game, one at time left. 2.24 to go, Friars by six. This is a critical way to win for Providence. You know, you have the lead and, and you have it erased, but the ability to stand tall and take the blow and, and continue to play hard, and now they've gotten themselves the lead again. How important late in this game that Providence has been on that four out of six run and that Ralph Willard's club has been in the short end of some close games. Well, I think the mental approach to the game is obviously different for both clubs. They're talking, coming from different directions. But Pitt has played hard all game long. They have never died. Allrich with the ball. It's Kevin Willard. They're trying to find Varga, but Crozier's on him tough. There he is. Varga gets it to go. The right man getting the ball. He's got 24 in the game. And now they'll, Providence will face this pressure all the way out here. Close to a five. Oh, must have just. He just got it in. It looked like Corbin was racing his hands to give it. Got to get it over midcourt by 10. And I think Providence escaped the bullet that time on both ends, inbounding and getting it over midcourt. Yeah, no question. Time was running out on either side of that point. But now they've gonna, they're gonna milk this clock here, spread it out, look for Crozier or Brown to get it inside. 12. Shit. Sham God working it now. It's down to eight on the shot clock. Great move. They were playing man-to-man. -man. Now they're going matchup zone. They got to call Sham God with the travel that time. As he tries to penetrate, there really wasn't much of a seam. Just a great switch defensively. You know, Providence is stalled, taking some time off the clock. They were man-to-man, -man, then they go zone. Nice adjustment by Pitt. It's still a five-point game. Two possession with 129 to go. Providence against Pitt at the Civic Center in Providence. Providence Friars and the Pitt Panthers. 129 to go, and it's the Friars by five. Ralph Willard just took one of his final two timeouts. Pitt's gonna really have to come up big here down the stretch. It's a two-possession game.
Well, we've seen them go full court their last, after the made buckets the last few times, and we'll see more of that. They'll take some chances defensively. If you're Providence, you want to be as careful with the basketball as you can. No fouls on the defensive end. Make them beat you. Providence with 18 fouls has one more foul on a reach in, and it'll still be the one-on-one -on -one bonus for Pitt. Providence coming out with full court pressure here. This is a good coaching move. Just take some time off the clock. Make Pitt work to score. Ulrich at the point now, number 12 with Willard in the backcourt. Varga's been the go-to guy. And absolutely plenty of time here. Don't need the three. Top shot by Willard. And a rebound by pull Derek it, Brown. Pull it out, Shane God. And that's completely unnecessary there. Sham God. I think a little frustrated, may have taken a shot to the throat, but just in the solid double team over half court. Willard with the reach in, I think, on that. Nice exchange Great there by job. Sham God and Willard. There's a lot of intensity and emotion. Nice job of the official to be right on top of that. I think it's been a well-officiated game today. Sham God's been Perfect from the line today. He's four out of four, nine points in the game. Make it five out of five. And again, another steady performance by Champ. Keep going, huh? Gonna need a shower after this game's <laughs> over. Sham God with the second. He's got it. Probably, so probably put a little full court here just for the time factor. Pitt needs a quick one. Clock down to a minute. Willard with the ball. All receiving, they get a three. It's a long one. Oh, he's got it. For the out here. Ralph Willard with a quick timeout. Oh, Allridge came up big. It's the second time he's come off the screen to shoot the big three-point shot. And you need quick hits if you're pit just like that one. Both Still teams. a lot of time, Ronnie. Yeah, both teams out of timeouts. Now Allridge has got to be 25 feet out for this bomb. With a yeah. hand in his face. And we've got ourselves a four-point game. Now, you've got this timeout set up right now. Neither team with any timeouts left. What do you look for Pitt to do defensively? And how about Providence coming out offensively? Well, I think Pitt is going to foul again immediately. If they can't get the steal, you'll see them take some chances defensively. If they can't get the steal, we'll see another quick foul come down to a matter of free throw shooting if you're Providence. Still plenty of time for Pittsburgh. It's a two-possession game, obviously but could get two twos Pitt. to tie it up. Depends on how you want to approach it. Got ourselves a good one here with four and seven for Pitt and Providence five and seven. Both, both teams really trying to get after this W. I think it's especially critical for Providence to take this one. They are on their home floor. They're trying to make that run to the NCAA. It's tough to get road wins in the Big East Conference. You need this one if, if you're Providence. Especially with Providence at home for this game. Pitt is had to play a number of tough road games lately. You see Crozier coming out. More and more coaches, too, using their big people, trying to just get the ball inbounds here. Mm. See, Varga is going to put the pressure on. Michael Brown's going to have a tough job getting this one in. The quick reach, and I think it's Varga, and if it is, it is indeed Vargan. You can hear the crowd reacting. They know he's gone. Well, that's the third guy to foul out for Pitt. Varga joins Gerald Jordan. Der Garrett Thomas, Ralph Willard with a big pat in the back, and he should. Uh, Chad Varga again comes up huge with 24 points here today and just plays relentlessly. And uh, the term a warrior really seems fitting for Chad Varga. No question. Scored and so Providence basketball. Watch for the long blow here. That's a turnover by Thomas, says Pitt. We'll take it with a second to go. Mail from three-point land. And that'll do it. Hard-fought battle out here with the Friars. A nine-point victory over the Pitt Panthers. A game of runs, but Providence able to put together the runs at the critical time. End of the first half, end of the second half. They answer it.
Well, good ball game and a good win for Providence at home. Chad Barger, a real warrior out there today for Pitt. As the Providence College Friars able to win this game. Well, that's it from the Providence Civic Center. The final score once again, Providence 80, Pitt 71. For Doris Burke, I'm Ron Perry wishing you a pleasant evening. This has been a presentation of Creative Sports. Thanks a lot.